The RSA conference is happening next week at Moscone in San Francisco, and we're super excited to be on site at Broadcast Row in Moscone West. One of our supporters that makes theCUBE coverage possible is Palo Alto Networks, and here with me to talk about the state of the market and what we can expect at RSA 2023 is Ankur Shah. He's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Prisma Cloud at Palo Alto Networks. Anka, good to see you again. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, likewise, good to see you, Dave. All right, let's talk about the state of cloud security. We're going to dig into some new data from the latest cloud threat report from Unit 42. It's like 35 pages, it's packed. It's not just survey data, it's sensor data, although there is a, a survey as well, about 2,500 SecOps pros uh, that focuses on the state of cloud native, native security that Palo Alto just also released. So a lot to unpack here. Anchor, the new cloud threat report, it's got some staggering findings about how long it takes to detect and, and respond, multi-factor authentication, who is and who isn't using it. You've got some really interesting examples of, of a SIM hack that should scare people. What, what stands out to you? Anything surprising? Yeah, for sure. Uh, look, this is our seventh installment of the report and I've been overseeing all seven of them. And uh, every year uh, it, it surprises me, the content of it. And I'm eagerly waiting to read the report. Um, so look, this time around, just like last time, thematically, one of the things that stood out was a lot of the, the supply chain attack. You know, the SIM swap is a cute name, but ultimately it was a supply chain attack. Uh, started with a mobile phone, but ultimately led to uh, breaches in public cloud. So that uh, consistently uh, remains a story. Uh, and the reason why a lot of these attack with the supply chain, we talk about crypto mining attack in the report as well, is um, you know really few buckets of things. One is sort of just uh, misconfigured stuff. You know, you talk about uh, MFA, but a big thing that the report highlights is uh, exposure, internet exposed instances, things of that nature. Another big area uh, is uh, vulnerabilities in open source code. Uh, there were literally thousands of malicious open source libraries detected. And ultimately with the modern supply chain, these open source components ultimately make its way in through the CI CD pipeline into your cloud. And that's a big uh, threat vector. And with open source libraries, one of the problems is also just a lot of dependencies. So the report talks about that dependency analysis, but um, those are uh, you know, the big challenges uh, we see in this threat report, but uh, you're going to see a rise of uh, supply chain attacks again, because the modern software supply chain is uh, complex and uh, you know, with uh, AI and a lot of open source tooling around AI and chat GPT, we're going to see more and more open source components. So uh, it'll be interesting next uh, few, few months and years. Yeah, there was a really interesting sort of uh, example of a SIM swap scam, which if people aren't familiar with that, you should be. Um, you think about MFA and you know, it's not enough. Also, the, the percent of organizations that have hard-coded credentials inside virtual machines, user data, I mean, so many things in there. Um, where are organizations and in, in SecOps teams, in your view, Ankur, getting it right and maybe not so right as they approach specifically cloud security? Yeah. Um, before I answer that question, just double-clicking on, you know, secrets and credentials in your code repo, uh, you know, secret scanning is a capability we launched late last year. And uh, just in last uh, few months uh, since our, our launch, I've been amazed by the number of secrets we've found across our customers, uh, over 28,000 secrets across 200 customers. So it's happening. Uh, it's always been there. Uh, you know, we are shining a bright light on that. Um, so, so that's, uh, uh, you know, definitely one area that customers are focused on now. You know, typically the customers that we talk to wants to start with uh, visibility and control because they just don't know what's happening in the cloud. So that's just sort of the, the, the basic and the bare minimum. The customers who are really getting it right is who are taking the risk prevention first approach. You know, detecting secrets early on in the code, detecting open source packages and vulnerabilities, detecting infrastructure as code mistakes. All of the, the customers who are moving, shifting left, uh, taking care of the problem early on in uh, the application lifecycle are getting it right. Look, at the end of the day, um, you know, cloud and modern supply chain, everything is complicated. At the end of the day, there are two primary things you need to do, risk reduction and breach prevention. And risk reduction as far to the left as possible. And uh, you know, in terms of breach prevention, you know, what could go wrong does often go wrong. 
So customers who do have compensating control running in cloud, have active protection, runtime protection, those tend to be the ones who, who really get this right. Okay, so Palo Alto Networks, as well as others often talk about, you just did you know, some of this, 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 this shift left. We're going to talk about that a little bit, but there's also a shift toward consolidated platforms as organizations look to try to reduce the number of security tools in their environment. And my question is, that this, I mean, this always sounds good, Ankara, but we never seem to get rid of stuff in IT. We just add. So is this really a trend of customers, buying habits changed? Do you have any examples that sort of underscore that? Yeah. Look, uh, uh, like you, Dave, and you've been doing this for a long time, and so have I. The last uh, 15 years, I've been hearing about market consolidations and platforms, et cetera. It hasn't happened yet. Um, you know, because there hasn't been a company like Palo Alto Network who has painted a big, broad vision. Uh, we're starting to see the early signs of that. Uh, just yesterday, uh, actually a couple of days ago, there was an API security company that was acquired by Akamai. And you're going to see more and more small vendors uh, and startups uh, get folded into uh, large security vendors like Palo Alto Network simply because customers just don't have the appetite to use, you know, four, 10, 15 tools, uh, which one of our cloud native security report uh, illustrated. So it's happening. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, you know, we got to be patient. You know, customers don't want the whole platform to start off. Like I said, they, they start with their journey with visibility and control. Um, tell me what I've got first. Uh, you know, then they take the shift left risk prevention approach and then runtime protection approach. So we'll get there and we're seeing early signs like, look, uh, more than 50% of our customers are using more than four of our modules and capabilities. So, so you know, it's, it's getting there. Uh, uh, consolidation is happening, uh, you know, wait a couple of years and I, I, I fully expect uh, there to be further consolidation in this space as we build out our portfolio and help our customers really, um, uh, you know, provide a sing single platform. The last week at our breaking analysis, we actually put up a map of potential uh, uh, acquisition targets. We circled API security as one that was going to happen. We didn't have Akamai as the acquirer, but it was pretty, it was pretty, pretty timely. Um, yeah. A, another finding in the report. Uh, go ahead, say it again. What's the next thing you circled? Um, <laughs> so, you know, there were so many on that map. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of identity that, yeah. that, that needs to co consolidate as well. That was, I think, the, the, the second area that we, we, uh, we, we focused on. So, yeah, you know, thank you for asking. Identity players now. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. Um, so another finding in the study was uh, the developer to security pro ratio keeps widening. And I want, can you explain why that's important and how, does, how it impacts you know, security and an organization's approach to security? Yeah, for sure. Uh, look, you and I have talked about it before, but uh, just for the audience, uh, there are over uh, 33 million developers right now and less than 3 million security professionals. Out of that, uh, you know, the folks who actually understand cloud security is a small percent. Um, so as I talk to customers, there's a real severe shortage of people, security prof professionals in general, but folks who understand cloud, is very, very few, right? And this is happening because um, you know, developers are building and shipping application, public cloud vendors, modern CI CD pipeline, it's making it so drop dead simple for people to write software. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you've been you know, keeping up with this whole uh, chat GPT and AI mania. I mean, nowadays the code write itself, right? I mean, so developers are just co-piloting it. So you know, over the next couple of years, you're going to see more and more software being built. Um, and I don't know if our enterprises are spending enough money on security. They got to amp up the investment in security to keep up with auto-generated code. I mean, they can barely keep up with the stuff that developers generate. Can you imagine the AI generating code and security teams keeping up with it? So it's going to be fascinating. Uh, and the only way to solve, like I said, is uh, we, we got to get more security professional security spends, got to grow, um, no other way to solve. Yeah, thank you for that. All right, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about Prisma Cloud. So two part question, why is visibility become such a hot topic and a big area of focus for cloud? And second, you, you also, you talk about prevention. Why does this need to be, you know, emphasized? I mean, it's, isn't it obvious? Yeah, great question. Uh, so look, the, the customers that we talk to, the cloud security practitioners under, uh, you know, the CISO, uh, you know, the, their first job is to just understand what's going on, right? So when we say visibility and control, it's all about 
you know, what cloud services am I using? Do I have vulnerabilities? Um, you know, can you prioritize what's most important for me so that, uh, so that I can go to the DevOps teams and say, hey, fix these top 10 problems. And this is what we mean by visibility, right? Like, tell me what's going on in the cloud, tell me the top problems and help me fix it, right? And it turns out that that journey itself takes a, takes a while, not because of the software and the product itself, ju it just because it requires the centralized security to team to work with a whole bunch of line of businesses and DevOps and applications team. Um, once they do that, once the security team earns the trust of the developers by highlighting the most important thing, then they can start having a conversation with the development team and say, hey, do you want us to help you prevent the risk to begin with? If so, let me, help, let me, help, let me bring security where you are, which is you know, building a plugin in your IDE or your source code control system or your CI CD pipeline, because that's where the developers are. So it's a two-step process. It takes a while. Um, there's a lot of friction, right? And uh, a core part of Prisma Cloud's mission um, has been to build the bridge between the security teams and the applications team or the DevOps teams. Yeah, so security is such a complicated matter for a lot of people. There's so many acronyms. And so I want to I want to pick your brain on something. I, I hear people talk about code to cloud security. Yeah. You know, what does that mean? And if you, if you have an example of how a customer would take advantage of that sort of full platform versus single module approach, I'd be interested in that. Absolutely. So the, the threat vector in the code phase is, you know, you have an infrastructure as code, um, you know, that's misconfigured. You have open source code uh, that has vulnerability. You have your own code that with known vulnerability, you've got secret. These are the types of problems or you have, you know, misconfigured version control system, you know. These are the five problems that in the code phase that customers ought to think about. It sounds simple, but there's a lot of work that happens in this application security practice that customers have to worry about it. That's the code phase. Once the code is built, it turns into an image, um, you know, software image, which looks like an application, but not yet because it's not deployed in production. At that stage, um, you know, there could be image poisoning or vulnerable images because you know, there are literally like hundreds of thousands of vulnerable images out there and developers can just download that. So there's a lot of security risks there. You know, somebody can introduce a piece of malware. And the last phase is the runtime. You know, this is where when the, when, you know, uh, if all your attempts at fixing problems early on in the pipeline didn't work, now uh, you know, uh, you've got problems that you got to deal with in production. Uh, hundreds and thousands of containers with vulnerabilities, misconfigurations, secrets, uh, and and uh, you know publicly exposed instances, sensitive data leakage, all kinds of problems. So this is what we mean by code to cloud checking, doing security checks every stage of the application pipeline, um, and ensuring that you know you minimize the risk, um, and then obviously continuously monitoring your cloud footprint so that if there is an attacker who is trying to gain access to your crown jewel, customers can prevent that. So let's stay on code to cloud for a minute. And we, everybody, we did it before, we threw on the term shift left. Um, why is it important to bring security to developers? Don't they, don't they have enough to do already? <laughs> What's the relationship that you want to have with developers? I mean, obviously I'm kidding, but they've become a critical part of you know, securing an enterprise, but they, you know, they're not SecOps pros necessarily. So I wonder if you could add some color there. Yeah, look, it is important because the only way to secure this is to train the developers to secure by design. Look, ultimately, uh, the nirvana is, you know, every developer understands the security risk. It's part of their pipeline. They always do the right thing. That's not going to happen automatically, right? Because uh, the default setting for the developer is to ship as quickly as possible because somebody's breathing down their neck to ship the code as fast as possible, right? The engineers always want to get stuff out there. So by bringing that security and training and making sure that the security is not intrusive, uh, that not a lot of false positives, uh, where developers can take corrective action, uh, that is the role of the centralized security team to train, to educate, to have the right tooling in place. Uh, because look, I am yet to, I mean, I, I run a large R&D organization. I'm yet to talk to a developer who says, I don't care about security. Everybody cares about security. It's just that the security traditionally, the way it's done, it's too intrusive, it's too complicated. Um, and it just simply does not work in the modern CI/CD pipeline. You know, within a second, the code's got to move to the next phase. And if your security tool is taking hours uh, and it's not real time, it simply just won't work. Great, that, uh, thank you, Ankur. Let's talk about RSA. Uh, it's going to be a big show. What are you looking forward to uh, next week? Uh, I, I, I presume you're going to, you're going to. I know Palo Alto's there in force. I presume you're going to be there. What should we look for? 
Yeah, it's going to be, we're going to have a big presence. Uh, you know, Palo Alto White, we have a big uh, CISO event on the Tuesday evening. We're going to have uh, Jerry Seinfeld and uh, Lenny Kravitz uh, share some security jokes and uh, poems or, or music notes. Um, uh, I'm going to be there, obviously, uh, uh, lots of customer meeting. And look, uh, I love uh, all the industry events, uh, uh, Reinforce, Ignite, uh, you know, you name it. But RSA is my favorite. Uh, you know, it got taken away in the middle of COVID. Uh, last year I was there, but it was uh, quiet. Uh, but this time, uh, you know, this is going to be one of the busiest RSA. I think people are hungry to network, to understand uh, what's happening in the, in the cloud and security in general. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be crazy. It's going to feel like uh, 2019. And that's the feeling I've been missing for a while. You know, it's interesting because you're right. 2020, I think RSA was one of the last physical shows uh, was. I wasn't there last year, uh, but you're saying it was it was quiet. It's not going to be quiet this year. I, I wonder if you could comment, it's like pre and post isolation economy. I wonder if you can comment on some of the big changes that we're likely to hear about. You talk about foundation models like GPT, you know, are definitely going to be part of the conversation. Any thoughts on, on other things that have changed that, that you expect that you want to highlight? Yeah, for sure. Uh, look, I was the, I was there at the RSA just before it got shut down um, in 2020 uh, after COVID. And I was like, um, I hope uh, nothing serious happened. Nothing did. Uh, you know, look, this year, um, I am looking forward to uh, figuring out what the sandbox nominees. Uh, that's my go-to place usually to understand what are the top companies. Uh, there is going to be a lot of conversation around AI uh, for sure. I expect uh, plenty of conversation on cloud. I think it's been a, it's been a theme for last many years. Um, you know, we're disrupting the, uh, you know, seam space uh, with our XIM. So there's going to be a plenty of discussion on SOC transformation. I fully expect that. So I think, uh, you know, some things will remain the same, but I ex fully expect there to be a lot of conversations around AI. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from customers, uh, you know, is this top of mind for them uh, just in terms of securing AI. Yeah, they got so much on their plate. Here's, here's yet another trend. Yeah, um, yet another let, let's, let's wrap, do a tease for me on the Code to Cloud Summit. You guys got this coming up in June. What's that all about? Yeah, you know, we are uh, just having a uh, whole bunch of customers uh, as part of this event. Uh, look, there is not enough knowledge and training that we can share with the world on the DevSecOps and DevOps practices. So, you know, I'm going to take your role uh, at the event and interviewing some of my top product people uh, and uh, have the whole world hear about uh, how to secure by design and how to do code to cloud security. So uh, looking forward to it, it's, it's going to be exciting. All right, Anchor Shah, thanks so much for helping us preview RSA. We'll see you next week. Yeah, likewise. Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, good to catch up again. Yeah, cool. Okay, yes, next week, theCUBE is going to be live in Broadcast Row in Moscone West all week. Stop by and see us if you're in town. And, and, and if not, you can catch all the action on the cube.net. Thank you for watching.